Hi, uh, hello again. Uh, talking to the stunning, amazing Marinda Donnelly. How are you feeling? What a big week! A <laughs> <laughs> uh, big six months. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you've been. What do you mean by six months? Have you been working towards this? Yeah, we've been building um, the program and producing the National Indigenous Dance Forum yeah. since November. We started our consultations last year. Yeah. And then it came to fruition this week. Yeah, um, the fifth, sixth, and seventh of May for three days. Congratulations. And, and was it what you, you know, did it go beyond your wildest dreams or were there surprises? How do you feel coming out of it from the other side? It exceeded my wildest expectations. Yeah. It was really fantastic. We had 200 Indigenous dance practitioners from the sector come. Uh, we weren't um, explicit about it being a contemporary dance forum or a cultural dance forum. We opened the doors and said, if you're a dancer and you're black, come to the Black Dance National Indigenous Dance Forum. Um, so it was a massive undertaking. Um, the partnership with Yerimboe was really important. Important. Um, it was a really good fit within the Yerimboe vision led by creative producer, creative director, Jacob Ohm. Um, and for a long time we'd um, been planning that um, the start of Yerimboy would coincide with the dance forum and there would be a closed protocol ceremony, um, which is a significant shift in the Indigenous festivals and presentation landscape in Australia because um, for a long time we've um, engaged in performing culture for an audience and performing ceremony and so um, the Elders Council of Yerimboy and the Black Dance Elders and Steering Groups and Jacob and I um, went through a really long process of negotiating protocol yep. and the opening of the dance forum yep. was a closed ceremony right. for in First Nations peoples only. So Good on you. <laughs> Shut, yeah, <up. laughs> Shut it down. Keep yeah. it closed. And did it feel amazing? Was it a different feeling? Uh, as soon as the protocol ceremony happened, like every single person was like, it was just this situating on Kulin Nation territory and, um, you know, this, it was a, there was a visceral feeling and physical experience of having a closed protocol ceremony and I know seeing all the how, but how freaking powerful <laughs> yeah. like remarkable yeah. the um the call like the elders council of um year and boy they were just it was really really special and because um the national indigenous dance forum also had some very special um um guests um, that we were honoured to host um, that were international First Nations peoples and so the protocol ceremony um, was not only um, responses to the cool and welcome from blackfellas from all across the country but there was also international responses and so it went for a really long time and there was absolutely a feeling of appropriateness and respect and ceremony yeah. That you just don't, you can't, you can't replicate that in front of an audience. I guess that's almost a shift in what the concept of performance is. Like as you said when you started talking about this, often uh, it, First Nations people are performing for a crowd, but this isn't performance, is it? It's something else. It was ceremony for the purpose of ceremony. Yeah. It was about being on country, and it was about protocol. It's full on. I can feel it. Resonant. You're radiating it. <laughs> and so um, that alone took a lot of orchestration. Um, Black Dance actually employed the most amazing protocol producer, Fred Leone, and his job was the protocol component of that protocol shit happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he did a really fantastic job. Wow. Yeah. So that was just the start of the dance forum. Then we spent um, the next two days after that um, going through a quite a highly structured, facilitated process yeah. about it being open. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so then it was opened up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was an open spaces forum yeah. um, and we had um, Wesley Enoch, yeah. Marilyn Miller, the founder of Black Dance, and Uncle Graham Brady, who's done a lot of work on um, – and, and his family have done a lot of work – 
on revitalizing and reclaiming indigenous dance especially in queensland yeah. um and he's a very well-known senior elder so the three of them facilitated mega team yeah facilitated this open spaces forum which just brought all of these um critical issues out and everyone had a voice everyone got to talk about what the most important thing for the future of indigenous dance in australia is yeah. it's all documented yeah. we'll be building a massive report um and we i was just watching that s that small very like six minute piece of obviously an endless co the massive conversation but what blew me away was the diversity of of what people were bringing up and i guess that's probably part of the issue when you know the the white fellow government comes in they just see one thing and don't understand the complexity and i guess that's why it's so vital to have that very complex uh s endless conversation and and realize it is it is diverse yeah the top five priorities that came out of the forum were incredibly diverse yeah. from international intercultural collaboration and exchange to culture as dance and medicine and healing to protocol frameworks to um, education you know it, the the topics yeah. were really really diverse and I think that was a reflection of the diversity of the participants yeah. and I think that's an accurate reflection of the diversity of indigenous peoples in Australia who consider themselves dancers yeah. Absolutely. Now, why is it so vital to have First Nations people at the forefront of where we're heading with our arts and culture in Australia? <sighs> <laughs> um, because if we don't, it's, it's, it's not relevant and it's not a reflection of our country, you know. It's disingenuous, would you say? Um, it's more than disingenuous. It's actually continuing, co you know, colonization yeah. and cultural genocide. Like if yeah. first peoples aren't first, yeah. then um, Australia is just continuing to perpetuate the big lie that yeah. terra nullius and you know. So first, the pain, the suffering, and the disregard everything that it's been going on with. Yeah, um, there's a really good word for um, actually describing this which is cognitive dissonance yeah so um if like mainstream everyday australians know the history of this country yeah. but refuse to acknowledge it and refuse to um uh redress it um and so it's like this it is cognitive dissonance yeah. you know because it just keeps perpetuating and uh, I, I, an auntie once said to me you know marina we have to lance the boil yeah. like and it's hard and it hurts yeah. and as you sort of said earlier that you know y you might get it wrong as well and that is so okay because everyone almost has this expectation that you get it right the first time and I think that's that's so perfect that you do get it wrong sometimes because everyone gets it wrong yeah and and the future of Australia in more than just arts and culture is actually about the way that Australians and Indigenous Australians create it together. Work together, yeah. yeah. And with respect yeah. and space and hearing, isn't it? It's about listening too. It's, and I think it's also about um, um, <laughs> the concept of coexistence. Yeah. And, and I don't think, you know, these are conversations that are long overdue, yeah. you know, and the idea of coexistence, I think, is a really critical thing to the future of Australia, which is you know, our right as Indigenous peoples to participate in, maintain, preserve, conserve our culture, our artistic expression, as well as participate in, maintain, preserve, conserve our artistic expression within the colonial infrastructure yes. that has been imposed on us. Yes. And I think that's a key issue, the, 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 the right to be separate, the right to absolutely be absolutely intrinsic in the centre of the other. And I think that's one of the big... Is that the is that not that's not a new understanding, but is that a key focus now coming in, heading towards the future? Um, so that's actually one of the articles from the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, yes. and that um, was worked on for at least thirty years by Indigenous leaders from all around the world, and not actually. Um, ratified by the Australian government until 2009. It came out in 2007. Yep. Um, so, no, it's not really a new concept. No. <laughs>
been around a while. <laughs> and just quickly, to finish it off, what is, if you could give your very short, I know it's a hard question, a ma- like, and you pretty much said it anyway, but how do you imagine things will look like in 2030 if you could have your way? And judging by your power and spirit, I think you might. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's the, it's that coexistence is visible, you know, and that we can clearly see that there's an indigenous arts and cultural industry. And then there's an Australian arts and cultural industry that really centers indigenous peoples and, you know, the whole idea of first peoples first. And, but also that, um, so I I think that by 2030, it wouldn't feel like, um, we're trying to push for it in, but it would actually feel like. Australians want it yes. and they see the value in it and they see the value in what this kind of modelling and future aspiration can do for our whole entire country. That's it. Yeah. How that shift will, will actually benefit all on so many levels. Absolutely. I totally agree. Well, thank you. I'm blown away. <laughs> and um, have a good the weekend still to come, babes. On the dance floor, a bit of karaoke tonight. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just going home to sleep. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Ha, ha, ha.